there are a lot of different ways that you could define privacy. So what is privacy? One helpful definition might look like this. Privacy is having control over who knows information about you, what information they know, and when they can know it. If you have a good deal of control over who knows what about you and when they know it, then most people would probably agree that you enjoy a high degree of privacy. Participation in social media always requires a sacrifice of privacy. Social media users usually show other people what they look like, who they spend their time with, what kinds of things they like to buy and to do, and what some of their opinions might be. On the one hand, there's nothing necessarily wrong with any of that. The whole point of a social network is to use the power of the internet to open up and to share with other people. On the other hand, the privacy trade-offs in social networking can become a problem when people share more than they thought they were sharing, or when they end up regretting something that they have shared previously. We're going to address three social media privacy issues in this lecture. Friend gluttony, copying and pasting, and employers. Social media privacy issue number one is friend gluttony. Some people strive to have as many friends or followers on social media as possible. When friending goes too far, we call this friend gluttony. On social media, members of your social network are sometimes called friends. In the real world, we usually mean something different when we talk about friends than what we mean when we talk about friends on social media. Social media friends are often people who we don't know very well, perhaps people that we met at a party, associates who we know through a friend, or people who we haven't seen in a long, long time. In the real world, most of us wouldn't share the same kinds of private information with distant associates that we would share with our closest friends. But social media do not automatically make distinctions between close friends and non-close friends. To social media, a friend is a friend, and its default settings will allow all of your friends equal access to all of the private information that you share. For this reason, it's a good idea to choose your friends wisely. Furthermore, because social media sites use words like friend, sometimes users feel like they're being unfriendly if they don't accept friend requests. Some users think, gee, if I reject a friend request, I'm saying that I dislike this person. But that's not true. All a friend rejection on social media means is that you aren't, at this time, allowing a particular person into your private network. The issue might not be that you dislike them, the issue might just be that you don't really know them that well. Why should you feel obligated to let somebody into your private network, especially if you don't know them that well? After all, it's your privacy and it's your network, so you don't have to fall into the trap of feeling obligated to friend everybody who sends you a friend request. And you don't have to feel obligated to send a friend request to everybody that you meet in person. Another trap to avoid is the trap of letting your number of social media contacts affect your sense of self-worth. Some people feel good if they have a large network, and some people feel bad if they have a small network. Such feelings lead some social media users to become friend gluttons. Now, I'm not trying to invalidate the feelings you might have about your social media presence, but I would like to caution you against participating in unsafe behaviors based on those feelings. It's okay to have a lot of friends, but you should limit your friend network to people who you have some kind of genuine relationship with. A good rule of thumb is to limit your network to people whom you feel inclined to wish a happy birthday to when their birthday comes around. If you don't like a person enough or care about them enough to take a moment to wish them happy birthday, well, then maybe you aren't close enough to that person to share your private information with them. Information such as pictures, relationship status, opinions, contact information, and maybe even your current location. Social media privacy issue number two is copying and pasting. Now, so far, I've been saying that the word friend is kind of misleading in the context of social media. I've been saying that media friends aren't always really friends, just members of your private online social network. But I should point out that a social network is only a private network in a limited sense of the word private. Once you put information out on the internet, it really isn't all that private anymore. Digital information is extraordinarily easy to copy and to share. Anybody who can see your social media profile can copy any of the text, the 
photos or the information on that profile and then share it with whomever they want. So be careful whom you add to your network and even more importantly, be careful what you share. Privacy issue number three is employers. You should keep in mind that the things that you share on social networks could come back to haunt you later. If you're applying for jobs, you should assume that your potential employers will search for your public social media profiles before hiring you. You should make sure that any publicly viewable portions of your social media profiles represent you in the best possible light. Some social media services allow you to see your profile as it appears to different people. You can see how your page appears to the public, or you can choose one of your contacts or followers and check out how your profile appears to that person. You should examine your profile from several different perspectives and adjust your privacy settings so it appears how you want it to. It would also be a good idea to search for your own name with a few different search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc., just to see what kinds of information potential employers might see when they search for you. Some employers will go so far as to ask you for your social media passwords during a job interview so that they can see an unfiltered view of your private profile and private network before they make the decision to hire you. Now, some states are beginning to pass laws against such practices, but in most places, this remains a legal demand. Many of you, I'm sure, wouldn't want to share your password with your employer, so it would be a good idea to prepare a courteous refusal to such requests before you go into an interview. You could say something like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm very cautious with private information like this. You're free to look at my public profile, but I have to keep my personal passwords to myself. If a potential employer will not accept a courteous no for an answer, then you'll have to make the difficult decision whether it's worth working for an employer like that. On the one hand, you might need the job. On the other hand, do you really want to work for somebody that doesn't respect your boundaries? Breaches of privacy on social networks can of course be embarrassing or upsetting, but they can also have severe, lasting effects on a person's career or social life. For example, in 2009, a Georgia high school teacher resigned after her district received an email complaint about content on her Facebook page. The email presented several pictures of the teacher holding alcoholic beverages while she was on vacation. The email was anonymous, but it claimed to come from a concerned parent. The teacher ended up resigning over the controversy. Since her resignation, this teacher has claimed that she had marked those vacation pictures as private, and she has also claimed that she was not friends with any of her students or with any of her students' parents. That might all be true, but still, somebody with access to her Facebook pictures clearly made copies of them and emailed them to her boss. One of her Facebook, quote, friends, whomever it was, made the decision to violate this teacher's privacy by spreading these pictures beyond their intended audience. Now, I'm not trying to say that this teacher is at fault or that she deserved to lose her job over such a trivial controversy, but this episode highlights many of the privacy issues that come up with social networking. It shows that Facebook friends aren't necessarily true friends. It shows that online information is easy to copy and to share. It shows you that you never really know what somebody will consider offensive or inappropriate. And it shows that some employers are very interested in the private information that you post online. Okay, let's review. In this lesson, we discussed three social media privacy issues. Friend gluttony, copying and pasting, and issues with employers. In the next lesson, we'll discuss how these privacy trade-offs on social media can lead to trade-offs in personal security. In particular, we'll look at how burglars use social media to choose their targets, and we'll look at how some cyber attackers use social media to spread malware to users like you.